everybody it is a rational radio here with another darning watch i am of course a wooden leg and below me i got eric and john coming in with their darning watch characters drake and tallow this is a sort of a special episode of darning watch because we are continuing the story so to speak of this one connected one shot groupings um, as we've been playing a lot more of these on Mondays, we're going to start kind of weaving this into a cohesive narrative of sorts, though trying to maintain some of the one-shot nature of the story still, where a arc is solved each session. But uh, with that out of the way, we are going to begin with them getting back from the last mission, the Fate of Hagord where they discovered a magic mirror that was capturing people and sending them to the Shadow Realm. They discovered that by striking the mirror uh, at the same time, once from the Shadow Realm and once from the Normal Realm, they were able to break it, sending them into a pocket dimension where they met the wizard known as Zan... Uh, as... as... Triple X, Xander, 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 no, Xander, 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 Xander Xavier Zaris. That's right, Xander Xavier Zaris. That's what I said. Xander, right? Cage. <laughs> Xander Cage, Vin Diesel, Triple X. <laughs> um, so uh, you guys got back to the shop in um the uh, the fort of Turbear. I gotta find the name of that here. Uh, Gorgon Keep. And were teleported to the headquarters of the Darning Watch in the Giran city of Arum. Um, you this is a little bit different as you're usually teleported home at the completion of a mission, but you have important information that you want to share with the Darning Watch concerning this wizard. So you appear in the city of Arum. This is a very strange city, as most Giran cities are, in that stretching in front of you is a cloud of doors, um, maybe stretching up a few hundred feet and out um, across a very large expanse of this field are many doors either hanging in the air or floating just a few feet off the ground. Um, other than that, you see nothing else. Um, but you hear... Um, from the the uh, invisible sp or the space in front of you guys where you've just teleported. Um, all right, just step forward. You have been here before. You know that that the infrastructure of the city is invisible unless you have a blessing of the city. Um, you don't, but it will be applied as you move through the city. Um, being Darning Watch Asians, it is applied automatically via your pocket watches. Um, you know you're not going to hit anything either. It just takes a little bit for the city to come into focus. Put a hand out in front of Taylor. Cool. Ah, careful. So, <laughs> no fast-moving carriage or something. Yeah, it's like the dumb shit anyway. No. Um, I think he'd just walk up and, yeah, present his watch to the area he's fairly confident uh is the thing but looking pretty dead straightforward as though he's confident in his action i'm sure he's done this once or twice uh just present his his watch as id and say um we uh are on our way to the dining watch hq we have some important information to uh relay to them just uh step forward and uh as you move, the blessing of the city will be applied. He does that. And I'm, and I'm Dallow, also. Hello. That makes no mention. <laughs> oh. Not particular talkative today, huh? We are right. perhaps his, like, you know, what, Four, hundred? He kind of just gestures in the, yeah, just <laughs> vicinity of the invisible man as we're walking forward. Uh, or where he heard it, his voice come from, anyway. Tallow is lazily laying on uh, Lucy's back. Like, you know, eating grapes style, like an emperor. <laughs> I love it. E eating a potato, obviously. Right, right. From your potato sock. From my potato sock. Yep. Sack, yep. sock. Sock sack. A sock sack. sack. 
No, it was a sock. It's a it's a it's old a white sock. sock. Yeah, it's an old white sock. Yeah, oh, tube sock. Done did Fuck. it. Yeah. Yep. A tube sock. <laughs> yes. Yep. I'm really and technically glad. it'd be a tuber sock. I it? actually <laughs> built that item in International Radio. Um, it is a magical item. Um, it is called the potato sock. It should be called the tuber sock. I'm pretty uh, sure. That I mean uh, that that is probably that's pretty good. You're right. You're right. <laughs> um, but yeah, well, they pay me by the hour. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, if there's a potato in the sock, it does bludgeoning damage, uh, magic, non-lethal bludgeoning damage, just 1d4, but the damage that it applies can't be detected by any normal means. What does that mean? That means if you hit someone <laughs> with it, they, they, you can <laughs> knock someone out, and they're like, what, what happened to him? And you look them over, and there's no bruising or anything. This is literally the perfect item for me. <laughs> Oh um, my god. Why didn't I That's... what why didn't I hit that orc god with this? That would have been better. We didn't have to like squish a bug on his head. Like it would have been way better. Um <laughs> you know, mistakes you still made. would have had to uh, you know, make that second swing. Uh, and kind of like dragging our cigarette as they're making their way into the town. As you guys move forward, you can slowly start to see shimmering outlines of stone buildings where the doors are standing. The, some of the doors being inside these structures are becoming harder to see as the walls slowly become opaque. You also notice that many of the structures are moving slowly, either connecting to one another or disconnecting or moving across the space on many arched legs. Um, one of the big, um, I guess, like, like themes of Aram is slow-moving architecture. Um, most of the buildings in the city can move uh, in some way, um, and it's e a slow, deliberate grinding as they're moving from place Relatively to place. Relatively quite quick architecture, though. <laughs> right, yes. You know, yeah. the grand scheme. Of most architecture is very architecture slow movement. moving. It yeah. takes decades to move yeah. an inch. <laughs> but these, these like guys the... are good at it. Like where, where do you think the uh, the cafe is now? Like last time, it was on the east side of town, but then the time before that, it was on the west. You think um, does it move like in an orderly fashion, or is there like Drake's kind of just standing there, like holding, you know, pinching bridge of his nose and like sighing and like breathing kind of deeply? Says, um, "Hang on, I always get like motion sickness, you know, as it all starts to appear." Give me a moment. Do, it's probably like all like woozy and shit. Do, do um, you want some potato? Would that make you feel better? <laughs> oh, it also, always helps me. Uh, yes. If you please. eat the entire non-baked potato, you gain one hit point. Uh, you know, I'm feeling pretty good after the like half of this potato. So there you go. He'll give you an bite. unbaked potato. You have to eat the whole thing, though. You have to eat uh, the oh, entire no, yeah, thing to get the hit point. He takes a bite out of it like it's an apple and, and then hands it back and nods, you know, approvingly. Like, Thank you. you. Take really big bites. I, you know, I, I will not, I, I will not, I wouldn't offer you a buffet. It's probably like a quarter of it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's or whatever's left. Yeah. Uh, he, fe I, he feeds the rest to Lucy. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. Lucy accepts the potato. I hope dogs can eat potatoes. They can. That sound like shit. Okay. Oh, yeah. It seems, seems like, like that's okay. okay. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. I love the idea, though, like, if one of you guys goes down, all you have to do is force the unconscious person to eat the entire raw <laughs> potato. You shove the <laughs> potato <laughs> to the Hey, Pop, wake. Yeah. Uh, so, you guys make your way through town. The Darning Watch building itself doesn't move from its spot, but it does move itself. You approach it, and you can see it uh, down one of the, the streets here. It is a very large square building that is made up of smaller squares that are constantly rotating and changing, sort of like a Rubik's Cube. Um, as you get approach, the bottom uh, like floor twists, and then a couple of the floors move like this until the door that you need is facing you. I hope it's not the bathroom this time. Last time we went right into the bathroom and someone was in there. <laughs> that was. took a lot of explaining I mean I needed to use the facilities so it was not an entire loss I suppose well do, <laughs> does it does it conform to like your needs like if, if we need to talk to you know the administrator do we immediately go into his office in the front door or 
if it does, there will be drama meme in here as he opens the door. <laughs> <laughs> you guys open the door and you see a very quaint waiting room. Um, there is the most of the surfaces are made of green, um, uh, like tile as well as red, um, burnished wood, uh, along the surfaces, uh, the, the walls and the, the stands, like the desks and stuff are made of this green tile. Um, there is a low hanging lamp above one of the desks and a thin half elf uh, older woman smoking a long thin cigar um, she's got a typewriter in front of her um, and she's lazily hitting a key every now and then while smoking the cigarette as you guys walk in she looks up and flicks the pit of the ash and goes it took you long enough um, oh man I know her do we know her name uh, Agnes who... Agnes I was gonna I was gonna say Rose but that's that's a better one Agnes is funny <laughs> Sorry, um, Aggie. <laughs> I don't call me that, Tallow. Uh, uh, a, a dog. <laughs> That's much a, better. A town. A town, yeah. <laughs> All right, A Street. What are we? What are we looking at here? <laughs> well, you've uh, you've uh, caught the attention of the big boy himself this time. Do, um. Do we know his name? Wait. Like, doctor it's dr let row dr let row is yep. that the that's the, like, the the head yeah the dude that runs all of it of yeah he's okay. uh oh, um he's like the chief yeah the chief of the darning watch yes uh probably probably chief i like chief yeah nice chief chief Leroux. let row that's solid um thing says um oh uh the chief was looking for us yeah, um, that's right. I'm not giving you your, your your papers this time. I think uh, the chief wants to see you and give you the papers himself. He's not uh, going to scream at me like last time, is he? He is probably going to scream at you like last time. And he like sets a you know pouch of tobacco on the uh, table uh, for Aggie here. I understand that <laughs> it was Eli. his teapot that I stole, but you know it's not like I wasn't going to give it back. You know, I gave a, him, I gave him the gems. It's not about the tea, pot, hon. Oh, fine. go on, go on in. She points behind her as a door rises from the floor and then separates, appearing in front of you. After you just turn and walk in, yeah, pretty casually, I imagine. This is probably that I assume that's standard procedure for. Yep. Yeah. Just um. Turn and walk in. You guys uh, walk into a very large office made of mahogany wood and covered in large green plant life. Um, on one wall is an enormous um, Aztec sun dais. It looks like, you know, a giant calendar um, in a circle behind the, the mahogany desk. Um, there are fine cracks coming from out from the center of it. It's like something struck it in the center and slowly cracked outwards. Um, behind the desk uh, is a um, middle-aged man wearing half-moon sunglasses and wearing a very well-fitted three-piece suit. Um, he is uh, meticulously looking over some of the cracks on the dais as you guys come in. Um, he turns around and takes his glasses off and puts them in his pocket and kind of folds his hands over his, uh, over his chest and says... Well, boys, you certainly have come into some kind of trouble this time. I tried to return the teapot to you. I just could not get the glass enclosure. Like, I had the gems. I gave them to you. The tea... Don't worry about the teapot. It is oh, not God. very important to the Thank grand God. scheme of things. Though there is a problem. The teacups? No. It's not tallow. Forget about the teacups and the teapot. Sorry, no. Chief. It, I tried focus to up. tell him not to take the entire tea set from the break room, but he wouldn't listen. <laughs> Just no, something. I wanted to talk to you about the last mission that you were on. That, oh, already. Um, he was knocked we... out when I got there. <laughs> Just size. 
Um, <laughs> uh, what about it? You solved it late. Um, uh, we took like lo it took longer than we were expected to. It that... took longer than it was going to take. Just kind of stares at him and drags off his cigarette. Probably furrows his brow. It says, um, "That um, could you elaborate?" Of course. Um, he slowly unbuttons his coat and puts it behind the chair. Um, and undoes his uh, uh, cuffs and says, uh, what I'm about to show you doesn't leave this room. Agreed? Drake looks over to Taylor. All right. Excellent. Nice. I will be making sure you keep that promise. Um, he undoes his cuffs and then unbuttons his shirt and takes that off. I don't... Uh, and puts it behind the desk. I think that you are quite an impressive figure, but I no, no. gotta say, I don't think of you that way. He, uh, he, he kind of puts out his hand and says, just a moment. And he takes a ring off of his finger and puts it on the desk. As he lets go of the ring, um, his body begins to shrink and his limbs begin to split one after another until he has four limbs on either side. Um, they become smaller and covered in white, fine hair. His head shrinks into the center of his body and be get, becomes covered in eight red eyes. Um, there is a large spider in front of you now, probably about four and a half feet uh, uh, wide, you know, from the, the edge of the tails and or from the, the, like, you know, in circumference of its legs. Um, and, uh, he kind of goes, uh, don't stare. I'm staring. <laughs> How are you going to put the ring back on? I, I just you still have your pants on. <laughs> <laughs> you got, like Hulk pants. <laughs> yeah. happening. I love that. <laughs> Is he like still kind of humanoid or? No, he's full, spider. full spider now. Yep. Just full pants spider. sitting on the floor. Yeah, basically. Yep. Yep. Right. The so he totally disrobed but in front of him. No, he, he left his pants off because those just slid off of him. The shirt would have ripped. Sure. Okay. Um, and uh, I so prefer he... magic pants that turn right. into spider pants. <laughs> I don't know what that even means. Yeah, exactly. yeah. <laughs> it's like the how do dogs wear pants uh, meme or whatever. He, uh, he clears his throat and says, I am a member of the race known as the Story Spiders. I am a special one in that we are called Fate Weavers. He skitters over and climbs up the dais and kind of turns and faces you guys and says, uh, you see, I can spin webs that can tell the future. I'm not sure how exactly accurate they are, and they it depends on things going a certain way before the prediction starts, but I can... 100% accurately predict certain outcomes of events. This is how I began the Darning Watch. Drake um, takes a gold piece out and hands it over to Taylor and he says, you were right. It's all an arachnid conspiracy. I told you. <laughs> <laughs> you know, totally out of uh, situation here. Could, could, you, could I bum a cigarette? I need <laughs> he just nods and is probably like handing it over <laughs> like as he's sweat like, beating down his face. <laughs> staring like <Yeah>. on... <laughs> oh, God. I began um, the darning watch with the strict intention of predicting catastrophes and solving them before they grew into the catastrophes that so often threaten Paralandia. By solving these missions, you have prevented uh, country ending events or uh, world shaking catastrophes that would kill many more people than they have already done so. This is why I am selective in determining which missions to send my agents on and which to let other agencies solve them. I called you in here and I have shown my true form to you so that you understand the unusualness of the fate of Hagorg. You this, this took longer <laughs> than my prediction. Everything else happened according to plan, but there is extra time 
that I could not, that my prediction did not account for. Well, that's what happens when wizards get involved, you know. I always say this every time. He's, wizards are just useless pieces of shit. He's, <laughs> like, scribbles down the, the dice and gets right up into your face and says... How? Oh, oh, okay. Yeah, I he thought did. you were saying he was writing something. No, 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 no. <laughs> Explain. <Yeah. laughs> skitter, sorry, skitter down the dais. Yeah, yes. no, you're good. <laughs> uh, and up to you, and he goes, what wizard? Um, you know, I assumed that you were aware of the rest of it. If you had not heard of, uh, ex, what, uh, Xander, Xavier, Zarus, Zarus, yeah. uh, triple X for short, as we uh, like to call him. The spider kind of spits of <laughs> and goes, damn it. I was worried about that. You, you knew about XXXX? I, <laughs> he is something of a... A nemesis of mine. Same. He has certain chaotic abilities that make it difficult for me to predict his actions. Same. Um, yes, he certainly did um, throw us for a loop, you might say. Uh, that takes a drag off his cigarette again. Um, we were expecting to come here and explain sort of the gist of his involvement in what we understand to be several of our recent um, operations. Well, please, enlighten me. Oh, God. Uh, so, he enabled the city to see a rat colony that had awoken, uh, who started stealing teapots. I'm convinced he owned the druid as a cat. Um, that, yes, the, I punched the cat to he death. He did kill the cat to death. It was brutal. Yes, was no, I predicted that. Druid cat. Right. <laughs> um, he sold magic beans to a kid that uh, started right. that whole forest situation, and then this time he gave a magic woman a mirror that whenever anybody was in front of it, it would suck their soul into a Shadow Realm-like esque situation. And uh, then he uh, bespoke to us in an interdimensional reality portal mumbo jumbo wizard bullshit. And uh, he seems to have some sort of background with the watch. Yes, he does. This isn't the first time he has tried to interfere with my plans, though it has been quite a few years since he's shown his face again. Just uh, off the record, curious, good guy plans, right? Like good, good for for common. No, plans. no, very bad plans. Oh, I was hoping you wouldn't say that. Oh. Um, that, um. So just to clarify, you don't eat people or anything, right? No, no, of course not. No, it's I can not, I can consume normal food. Up. I I generally prefer the human form as it's uh. Less. And we thought you were going to end with flesh. <laughs> I also thought you were going to end in flesh. <laughs> the human form. Form. I, I enjoy a good bacon sandwich. Um, that does not. Right? Except, you yes, are, you you are more relatable of an arachnid than I'd first uh, <laughs> taken you for. No, I'm a very understanding spider. Um, especially to the, the mammal form. I... I prefer being a mammal, in fact. Um, that ring there on the desk is a ring of true polymorph. That is how I am able to keep my form. But... I will jot that down in my brain for later consumption. <laughs> Note to self. <laughs> <laughs> so... I'm going to be kicked out of the door. Taylor will, <laughs> exactly. with, uh, Taylor will remember this. <laughs> with that in, in mind, he actually goes over to the desk and the, he puts one of his spider legs through the ring, and as he does, he shifts back into human form until he's wearing the ring again on his hand. And he goes, ah, that's better. He puts on his pants, um, and then puts on his shirt and, and jacket, uh, and says, with that out of the way, now you understand why I've called you in here. I have a special job for you that I think Xander had something to do with as I cannot predict its outcome. Only the events leading up to the 
uh, entry into the anomaly that has been discovered. Would you call yourself a wizard? <laughs> I know this is no. kind of thing. No, I no, actually don't really have any thumbs up. <laughs> innate magical abilities beyond the fortune telling. Bellow pulls out a notebook and writes that down. <laughs> <laughs> Not wizard. Crosses chief <laughs> off the list yeah. <laughs> of suspected wizards. <laughs> Gonna make suspected him wear a patch. <laughs> Drake has been it. crossed out and added back three times. <laughs> <laughs> finally. <laughs> finally is crossed out. Oh my god. Um yeah. So uh, he'll say um what uh well I believe that it was our intention to try and um you know inform wh whoever was you know the person to report to that there seemed to be a chain of activity connected to this um this wizard and that it was the continuing investigation needed of further attention. So I suppose if you need us to do something and he kind of looks over at Taylor and says, oh, it seems that this is sort of, you know, a mess we have started in already. Yes, consider yourselves lead investigators of Xander Xavier Zaris. Is that a promotion? Um, the kind that does not come with a pay raise, usually. Correct. Oh. <laughs> Wait, you get paid? <laughs> Don't discuss, employees are not to discuss their salaries with one another, thank you. <laughs> I think yeah, Drake's illegal. just smoking off of it. You know, it does not respond. It's like, yep, had this conversation. Hello also yeah. starts smoking. <laughs> Wait a minute. Uh, <laughs> Dr. Uh, Chief Latour um, kind of stretches and then says, what do you know of the country of Tyrion in the old Galdor Mountains? Anything? Have either of you been there before? I am uh, not especially well-traveled. That uh, exists. <laughs> I do know of it. <laughs> right. I, I, I robbed a few caravans coming from there back in my old life. That that makes sense. It is uh, most of its tr most of its wealth is built on trade, as it's one of the only passes open through the old Galdor Mountains, in between the Dwarven Lands and Scar Valley. They make a lot of their money through trade and mining activities. And in the city of Mur, one of these mining activities has uncovered some kind of chamber. It did not have a door, only a exterior shell that the miners broke through. Inside... That's never a good sign. No, they, they <laughs> did not listen to their mining training manuals, which said any unusual doors or chambers are to be left sealed as you're digging into old dwarven mines and, uh, and tunnels. No, I, no idea what they had down there. Well, when they broke through, they discovered that the chamber had an enormous red-skinned figure, four stories tall, chained with shackles made of interlocking vertebrae of, they said, man, animals they did not recognize. They realized that the thing was staring at them, and that prompted them to leave. Wait, so there's a giant fuck-off creature in an uninhabited cave chained up yes chained in, a in an uninhabited cave can... you're yes. in this chamber yes i would like you two to go into that chamber and ascertain whether it is a threat to paralandia so now you want us to go into the aforementioned cave with one occupant being a giant fuck off demon creature with red skin Yes. That seems to leave. You know, it might not be a demon. It could be Clifford. Oh, yeah, that old uh, wives' tale about the giant fuck-off dog that was changed <laughs> in a cave with vertebrae. You're right. I shouted it you know, come through my I mind I might like be that. mixing up childhood tales. <laughs> now, Something about a flute guy. I have not been able to predict whether this being will have any effect on Paralandia. It's an anomaly, which is why I need you to check it out. All right. Um, is there a... Con I suppose the connection is that you don't have a good read on it. Correct. That's why you are connecting it. And I would, I would like you to determine whether it is connected to Xander Xavier Zaris at all. And or not. then, what? Drop the roof on this thing, or... 
if you can if you figure a method of containing or destroying it i urge you to take that if you deem it necessary if not report back here and we'll find someone more suited for the job i have a very fun question yes what happens if we free it somehow by accident well I hope that it is some kind of benevolent creature that has been chained up under the ground for thousands and thousands of years. With chains made out of vertebrae. Yes. Is that... He, he looks to Trey. Does that happen very often? There are a lot of really um, nice chained up vertebrae creatures. Perhaps if it was very awful things that chained him up, he shrugs. <laughs> well, that is what I need there. you to find out. What put him there? Certainly. Who is it? Why is it there? So, so we get we have to talk to it. Uh, if it's possible to, to communicate with it, yes. If not, just explore the chamber and come back with any information that you can. Again, my prediction and my my um, uh, ability to see the outcome of things cannot penetrate that strange sphere that it is inside. So. Do you know when you're sending an agent out on a mission that they're not going to come back from? <laughs> well, that will be all, gentlemen. Um, thank you very much for being here. Um, and uh, I hope that you are successful. Talk to Agnes, and she will get you the appropriate portal. Is she a giant spider? No, she is not. She does know of my form, but I would prefer if you did not... Uh, spread that information around no it's i mean it's kind of so far-fetched that even if we said it it would just sound like cooler talk you know i bet him a gold piece that it was not true <laughs> right yes. i sussed you out like day one <laughs> yes i'm sure you've heard my boss the my boss is a spider um conspiracy theory well in this case it's true and i may be the origin of that i would like to leave now <laughs> yes. Yeah. Thank same. you very much. He has finishes. Lucy has Lucy been reacting to this the whole time? Uh she actually doesn't seem to mind him very much. Oh. Actually, when he was mind. like right up next to you, uh, uh, interrogating you, she was like like sniffing at his legs. All right, Lucy. I I trust your judgment. All right. You guys so leave. Pretty good. Yeah, we head out. Oh. Well, how was it? An eye opening, multiple eye opening experience. Would you like some hard candy? Drake is gonna grab uh, one of the <laughs> where there's originals. Oh, the necromantic <laughs> candy, the uh, Withers originals. <laughs> That's good. That's good. And, um, uh, you know, probably a small handful, as is his standard. <laughs> he nods and is just gonna keep walking, kind of looking pretty shell shocked. <laughs> did, did you did you happen to get any uh, dog treats like I asked last time? Oh yes, here you go. She gets under the the desk and comes out with a little brown bag. There you go. The best. <laughs> and uh, Lucy will play dead, roll over, play dead again, and play dead for the next two minutes. All right. So here's here's the the dossier that you need. All you have to do is go through that door. There's another door that appears on the opposite wall of the boss's door that's uh, just got a, a PDW written on it. The Don and Watch portal. That'll send you to Mer. It's just right. loud crunching from Drake on one of those. <laughs> you're not supposed to chew those, you know. You're supposed to, like, I am suck on them for a while. <laughs> it's got to do horrible things to your teeth. <laughs> Sounds like chewing ice cubes. Uh. All right. Well, thank you, Agnes. I appreciate it. Of course, honey. All right, Drake. Come on. Yeah, yeah this way. Go walk. He looks, yeah, he's like mouth flaps a couple times and then just shakes his head and spins around <laughs> and heads out the door. I think like your boss might eat you. No way. <laughs> I, I didn't see that in the manual, but you know, yeah. <laughs> it was not something that I felt was worth, like you know printing in the uh well iteration two will be way better than the first one <laughs> most certainly <laughs> he just nods like that's where yeah he, pu he pushes you through the portal and follows yep. 
You, uh, the door opens and you just see a swirling portal behind it. Um, you step through and are immediately teleported to a very cold mountain pass overlooking the city of Myrrh. It is not much of a city, more like a the opening to a mine, a very large mine shaft. Though there are a lot of um, chimneys that are coming out from the ceiling of the the mine shaft and blowing black smoke into the air. You know, they could have warned us that it was going to be cold. <laughs> Drake just pulls his uh, uh, big old trench coat around him <laughs> and like uh, starts, I guess, looking through the dossier and everything, starting to get the, uh, you know, who the foreman or whoever it is that, you know, the first point of yep. contact. Uh, you're looking for the guard captain named Steve Piate. He will take you to the chamber. He scribbles that down on a scrap of... Uh, random burger wrapper or something in his pocket and then folds up the dossier and gets walking. Should we uh, get, get some equipment before we go down there? Like uh, oh. like like lights in case some things happen or pickaxes in case some things happen or holy water in case some things happen. You know, not normal mining equipment. <laughs> <laughs> holy water. Normal mining equipment. Um I am able to uh, bless uh, water and things of that nature. I Boy, am, uh, I think I can too. I'm ordained. <laughs> oh, I forgot. Class. Yeah. Got a mail in certificate. <laughs> <laughs> Pulls no. it out of one of his pockets. <laughs> <laughs> folded up and coffee stained or whatever probably uh but yeah, no notes um, written all over it <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> um but he says anyway i believe that we should um start with uh speaking with this uh steven um the head guard here and perhaps before you know i guess delving into the depths of this mine then we can if we, you know, perhaps he will have some equipment which we can borrow. Right. I mean, you know, Donning Watch, they basically give us stuff, right? When you say borrow, you mean you can keep it? Because I feel like I borrow a lot of stuff. Just like takes a drag off a cigarette while staring at you. <laughs> you look in his pack and there's like, <laughs> there's ski shoes for some reason. <laughs> there's a fish bowl with no fish in it. Am I doing this wrong? I, I never mind. All right. Uh, lead on. I assume you know, like, a general location that probably says, like, next to the bar. Yeah, it's a guardhouse center town. Cool. Yes. He, he nods and, uh, you know, after staring for a moment or two longer, probably. <laughs> and then, you know, yeah, we head toward the guardhouse. Uh, he puts you... the ski shoes on. Very good. That ha they help is... a little bit. Yeah, it is not that cold. Yeah, well, it, I, my little legs don't really do well in even shallow snow. <laughs> uh, you guys enter the very large um, mine shaft entrance and see that a city has kind of grown along each side of the mine's walls um, that have been part marked with smaller channels, chambers that have gone off. Um, there are people that are that are going about their business here, um, walking back and forth between shops, trading goods along the city streets. Um, mostly humans, um, but you see a lot of goblins, orcs, and um, uh, some half elves as well, um, half elf merchants. Uh, as you guys uh, walk through, you see down the in the center of this kind of main drag a large building that is ostentatiously the guard building there's a few guards around it as well as a medium to high wall um walk up and you know flash the badge and say um we are looking for uh god captain and he'll fish out the scrap of paper uh was it patel maybe I don't yeah what his last name is. Yep. Pate? <laughs> yeah title Pate. or something or whatever right um they one of them nods and uh, goes through a door along the wall, and in a few moments, a, another a man comes out. He's wearing uh, the silver armor 
of Ethereum, but it is poorly fitted and not clipped in very well. Um, he's holding a few papers close to his chest, and his uh, cap is askew as he bursts through the door. A few papers flutter, and he goes, Oh, God, God damn it. All right, all right. Yes, hello, your darning watch, yes? Yeah, that is correct. He shifts uncomfortably in his armor and says, All right, well, I don't know what the fuck is down there, but it's, it's screwing everything up. The miners are on strike. Did they unionize? Uh, Drake's, Drake's told me that unions are good. Uh, let, let they've got unions on top of unions. The unions have splintered, splintered into smaller unions that are now having union meetings on how to join and form other bigger unions. It's a mess. They refuse I'm to covering... even. Sorry. Go ahead. Yeah, they refuse to even in, even talk to the the mine owners before they've actually successfully joined the unions. But I, regardless, what do you what do you need to to figure this out? Um, a couple has... pickaxes, uh, some some holy water. No, just water's fine. We can make holy water. Um, we could start with whatever you can tell us about what was uncovered here recently. One of those lantern hats. He does. He kind of points like, eh, yeah, actually. <laughs> well, they were just they were mining through. We had found a new coal vein that hadn't been touched by the dwarves, which is pretty rare honestly usually we're just picking up their scraps here but no we found one that they hadn't touched yet followed it down a few hundred yards pretty easy going then they found just a wall it was just a wall cutting right through the coal vein like it teleported there or something well they they checked it out it didn't apparently look dwarven so they decided that it could have been a natural occurrence they broke through it and it wasn't natural. They, they, uh, I, I've already fired them. I reprimanded them for uh, disturbing uh, artifacts that they'd found mining without telling a superior. That's a, a big infraction. Well, it's good that you uh, fired them before the union thing, or else it could have been a whole problem, right? Uh, no, actually, it, that exacerbated the problem. Oh. Yeah, uh, sure. Hey. For the reason for folks to feel that they could not, uh, you know, rely on you to or what, you know, whatever. Yeah, uh, I, I don't, I don't want to get into that. the union politics you know, of this, uh, but yeah, that seems so that's, to perhaps be a symptom of a greater problem, which is the ancient evil, which was uncovered. Correct. Or potential evil. <laughs> oh, I thought you were talking about capitalism. <laughs> it, the thing, it, it looks evil as is, is, is sin. All right, so. I don't, and it's like chained up with bones and stuff. There's like uh, strange symbols on the walls. I don't know. I don't. I don't like it. it gives me the heebie-jeebies. It gives everyone the heebie-jeebies. And, and the, yeah. what has happened? Uh, yeah. What is the state of those who uh, broke into the chamber? Are they all okay? Has anything happened with yeah, them? Yeah. They they seem fine. Yeah, that's. They gotta and, find uh, more new jobs, but they, they're fine <laughs> otherwise sure um and uh any other sort of strange developments or conflicts accidents weird things which have been occurring uh out of oh. ordinary events what? do you need yeah, more no. get like more I'm... shit other than the giant fuck off thing in the cave but then, look, you know, figuring out the nature of the problem may be uh, integral to finding the solution. No, nothing else has happened unless it causes people to unionize against their rightful employers. He's going to jot that down. <laughs> I will uh, investigate that uh, eventuality. I am not familiar with any beasts which have such ability. So. <laughs> Talos, Talos notes just include... <laughs> Union equals bad question mark. <laughs> right, right, right. You know the the union demon. I get it. I get it. I get it. So, uh, so give, about those pickaxes and yeah, the, the headlights and whatever you need, just just talk to to Bill here. He points to one of the guards. He'll get you the stuff you need. We got a lot of extra mining equipment. Seeing as all the miners are on fucking strike right now. Oh, Bill, Billy boy, Bill, old. old old b i i really need your help here i need you to get me all the things i listed currently uh like pretty quickly 
Thank you, Bill. Stay beautiful. <laughs> what do you have on there? Pickaxes. Hmm? Uh, pickaxes, head lanterns. Oh. Yeah. Um, holy water. water. <laughs> <laughs> holy water. That was listed. Um, well, like climbing gear, maybe potentially. I guess. Rope. Yeah. Rope. Yeah, like but pythons or pit yep. pythons, whatever the pythons. Those... Pythons. The thingies you hammer in, the loops. The big, the big nails. Big, really big paper clips. Big paper clips. <laughs> yeah, real big paper clips. I got you. I don't know why, but I got your paper clips. Uh, yeah, I, I do have one other question. Um, yeah. Would, would your town happen to strip mine pretty often? Uh, well, not mer. No, we we do the undermine kind of kind of mine. So you have no dynamite. Oh no, we got dynamite. I'm gonna need like six sticks of dynamite. That's All it. Right. That's my list. <laughs> I oh. will do everything in my power to ensure that that is not lit or used. <laughs> I mean, you gotta do what you gotta do. It's an uh, eventuality, you know. Right. Then that may be the solution we come to. We but, got all uh, the coal out of that that vein, so you know it, it's all right. Okay. Then uh, you know we will. Uh, you know, our goal here is to determine what exactly put that thing down there and and what it is and why it's here i suppose great um, i'm very excited we're gonna we're gonna do that <laughs> we sure <laughs> Just might thumbs up. do that yes correct <laughs> i'm gonna escort you down there bill's gonna get you stuff wonderful um is there anything else that you can think of that we should get before we um venture into the deeps here he looks over at him uh well my dad was a uh was a miner and he said that uh a lot of mining incidents involve poisonous gases and stuff that you couldn't see uh i don't believe in that it sounds like magic to me but um but he always had a bird with him should we have a bird Do your miners use birds? <laughs> Look over at the card uh, Do no. you have a bird available? Uh, no. <laughs> Just um, on hand by any chance. Uh, we we usually use rats. Is that as effective? Does it, is, does it do the same thing? I don't know. Is There's not a whole lot of songbirds in the time. mountains. So we just get by with what we can find. Yeah, hold on. Uh, hey, hey, Lucy. And he'll... he'll... He'll get down on a knee, even though he doesn't have to, because Lucy's way bigger than him. <laughs> and he'll he'll like pat her on the mane. You uh, you think you could smell poisonous things in the air? Gross. Did you say mane? Yeah, like around here, the mane <laughs> section. They call it a neck, I think, but you know, mane sounds cooler. I'm envisioning your dog with like a lion's mane. Well, she kind of does. She's yeah, okay. Burmese. Yep. Um, yep. Yep. Got it. Lucy's a good girl. <laughs> she is indeed. So yeah, Lucy, you think you can, you know, smell that roof? Is 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 she actually perfect? <laughs> um, did she say yes? Uh, she barked at me, uh, but in my head, uh, I I interpreted that as a yes. Uh, she can she can talk to me and communicate, but you know, normally she uh -huh. just likes to relax. Of course, she can. He just nods. Do you still not believe that that happens? Never mind. We'll get. We'll, we'll cross this bridge again. Just yes. Put, 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 a, put a pin in it, and we'll we'll come back over here over this bridge again when Lucy saves our asses for the fifth time. Mm, okay. <laughs> uh, perfect. Steve leads you guys to the very back of town through uh, a few snaking mine tunnels that have lamps um, uh, pounded into the sides of the walls. Um, that flicker with firelight. You guys descend uh, pretty far, maybe about three quarters of a mile into the mining network um, before one of the paths splits off and he leads you into a chamber that has two guards standing on either side of it and down a long, uh, semi-straight passageway until he gets maybe 25 feet from what looks like a white wall that is just cutting through the rock in front of you with a hole that has been obviously chipped through with pickaxes. Um, you guys hear the sound of a cart behind you 
and Bill huffs up with the the large amounts of supplies that you've requested in a wheelbarrow. You got your pick axes, your head lanterns, your holy water in three jugs, uh, a 200 feet of rope, two sets of climbing gear, and six sticks of dynamite. Thank you very much, Bill. <sighs> All right. Do we do we split the dynamite? Do you want me to have the dynamite? I think um, perhaps we should, uh, you know, leave the dynamite in the cart until we are right. Of course, sure I would. While he's talking, I would like to be uh, <laughs> taking the dynamite and stuffing at least three <laughs> sticks into my back, like the back pocket of. Uh, roll me sleight of hand. Okay. Oof. You probably you probably get behind me. Yep. Oh yeah, sure. you guys, <laughs> you get three sticks of dynamite in your back pocket. He's just nodding and you know, like feeling like you're believing him. As you're they saying, only yeah. brought us three, though. That's you know, it's not. <laughs> I asked for six. I could have sworn. No, I, just, I like, think that you know, chin. it looked like holy water vials. You know, it, it, it got me sure. Through. You know, it and he like backs off because he's probably still smoking. Steve uh, yeah. cuts through and says, uh, "All right, I I don't like being this close to this thing. So me and my boys are gonna be at the entrance to this coal sh coal vein. When you guys are done or you have information, just come up and talk to us. We will do that. Um, if you hear some sort of awful, unearthly screaming, um, oh, we're gonna be gone." And we're gonna just detonate the whole tunnels. I'd say that's well, I was maybe going don't to say that. Perhaps that might be a good suit. give us some time, though. You know, not I, like yeah, too much. If but. if we <laughs> happen to be buried underneath a bunch of rubble, uh, this dynamite might find its way underneath your city, and that's not a threat. I'm just you know, it could happen. <laughs> it would right. be a shame. It would be really shameful. That that it would happened. be really I mean, bad. Would be not horrible. sure how far we can get with six sticks of dynamite. Or, three. Sorry, three sticks of dynamite. <laughs> he yeah, points back at the cart. He smirks just three. ever so slowly. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I'm going to leave you professionals to it. Uh, have, have fun. Yeah, fun. Thanks. Nod slowly. Um, well, Drake, what the fuck do we do? Do we just walk in there? Cock swinging. Or do we? I think um, we should go in there with the idea that we are just trying to figure out, you know, that that our express purpose is to uh, get information about who this and you know they are and why they're down here, regardless of what we you know conclusions we may come to as to what is a necessary step after. I have a feeling that that may be the way that we can secure the most information from them. Right. Thank you so much again for uh, volunteering to talk to it. I really appreciate that from you. That's very that's very kind of you. He just nods. Roll gaslighting. <laughs> <laughs> that means you have to play bad cop as oh. he turns to walk oh, in. No. Wait, hold on. It's not, it's not what I wanted. <laughs> All right, and as you guys walk in, we are going to take our break. We will be back in 15 minutes as they begin their conversation with whatever is down here. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Again, we'll be back in 15 minutes. See you then. So you did mention theater of the mind versus always having maps out. And yeah. that that's another thing. Not every DM is either willing or able to do a full theater of the mind combat system. And not every player is going to be okay with that. Some people want to see the, the actual layout. They want to see the images. They want to see the map. They want to see the distance. They want it all, you know, particularly plotted which is not a bad thing you do need to know beforehand whether your dm is going to be doing that or not as a dm i like rarely map unless it's combat but free and frequently combat's just a grid so that everybody knows how far away they are from everything uh though for me because it's just easier to keep everything straight i think
as a player, I find it very difficult to, uh, especially with uh, the way combat and, and most of the abilities are structured in D&D, it's pretty hard to feel like I'm keeping track of exactly what all's happening and going on and how how close am I to this person in relation to this person and stuff like that can matter uh, pretty quickly sometimes and some, you know, depending on your campaign. Uh, but there are ways to run combat that totally don't rely on those kind of specific distinctions. Uh, you can kind of just do the like, you know, bands, you know, range bands of combat or something that they've introduced into these other systems that um, take away the specific like what square am I questions uh and and yeah that's a, that's a big difference in play um and and how the spells and abilities your your characters have translate into what you can kind of do during the uh combat or during you know outside of combat stuff like that <laughs> Welcome to Bid Seeds General Store. We have the largest selection of fantasy based items on this side of the Greater Dandaris River. Why don't we go inside and check out what I have for sale? Let's go. We are now inside Big Seeds General Store. Let's see what I have for sale. Well, this sure looks like a fine selection. We have bananas, onions, dragon eggs, pajama pants, occult statues, daggers, dangerous animals, socks, small figurines, real fake daggers, Diplomas, drink koozies, hammers, potatoes. Well, that's just a small bit of our inventory. So you should do yourself a favor and come on down to Big Seeds General Store where we will treat you like you want to be treated. Step one of putting together a group or finding a group is is time frame. It's it's scheduling. Yeah. So definitely. Before you can before you can even look at a a DM's preferences or style or players' uh, tendencies, styles, preferences. Before you can look at any of that, you have to look at scheduling, because even though you might find a DM that runs a really good game. <laughs> that you really want to be a part of if you can't make the, the the times if you can't be a part of their schedule it's not worth trying to force it because right. you're going to end up missing you're going to have players that are going to end up missing yeah. so scheduling you you have to be able to make the appointed times Definitely. everyone does right i guess the best group yeah. in the world is not a group if they're not able to come together and and get around a table and play the game i suppose yeah obviously the particulars of that are going to vary for everybody but um do you feel like uh there are any sort of tools tips or cheat codes to getting a schedule you know, scheduling to work the very first thing you have to do is to everybody has to understand their own limitations right you need okay. to sit down and and write it down write down when sure. are your guaranteed days you write it down so you don't have to think about it figure out go through your week go through out go through your month write it down put it on a notepad just know your own availability so that you know where to look i think that's that seems like a really simple thing i think to a lot of people but that is absolutely that's key is like yeah know your damn schedule and you think it's easy enough to recall your schedule <laughs> but when you're put on the spot 
you're gonna sit there and try to go through do i have anything on this this day do i yeah. have anything on this day <laughs> just go through it ahead of time and write it down so you can say yeah i know it it's right here i've uh, i that's i agree that's a good idea um i i lean toward i have a, a google calendar which is what i use to keep like everything in my life uh that is organized organized um do you have any favored tools to use i uh programs things of that nature now personally my schedule has always been pretty easy to work around <laughs> it's, it's a set schedule so i mean there may be some better tools like if you if you look at it you can make a um you can make a chart off of like google documents or something like sure. that um and which is what i used in my questionnaire that's one of that's like the first thing that i had it's basically just a a, a series of rows and columns with little check boxes different times of the day different days of the week check the ones that you can be a part of right that you know you can be a part of and and that's the best thing for it if you're looking for a dm or if you're looking for players you know if you can get the most information about time frame and availability and you can line people up with what matches that's the easiest thing and it, it's a really cool um it's a really cool t tool that i used and it is on um uh, it was on Google Documents. It's pretty easy to use. Uh, it lets you put in however many rows, however many columns, and it just puts little check boxes there. And all you gotta do is just click on all the ones that are applicable. Now, obviously life happens, right. but you need to know what, you know, 90% of the time or more, this day, this time slot, this is when I can make these games. And then you need to look for a DM that's running a game in that time slot if they're not in if they're not in one of your time slots move on attention if you or a loved one has been diagnosed with lycanthropy you may be entitled to financial compensation lycanthropy is a rare uncontrolled animalis transformation linked with monster bite exposure Exposure to monster bites in the mercenary, adventuring, questing, or mortuary industries may put you at risk. Please don't wait. Raven 1-800-99-RAR-RNG for a free legal consultation and a financial information scroll. Lycanthropy patients send a Raven now. 1-800-RAR-RNG. Hello, it is Irrational Radio. We are here with another Old for Gold episode. Smart like a fox. Foxes can't, don't know <laughs> alphabets. Well, I yeah, can do yeah, some I some quick and dirties. I um, I can just remove the toilet entirely, and you can just shit down the hole. I have a deadbeat brother who is still sleeping on my feet, and I need him to leave before my wife's sister's wedding. Did you say in your beanbag? Yes, he has been crashing on my living room beanbag for a long time. <laughs> He has a beanbag. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Well, I'll make sure I let you know when I forward all of your orders into one of the sections. <laughs> this is the most ridiculous uh, situation. You were making it this whole way through like that wasn't a totally ridiculous idea until you had to say, and I will pour your food into the giant <laughs> trough which you will retrieve it from. <laughs> You know, assuming scheduling's out of the way, I guess, uh, and that you've got, um, you know, whatever handful of people, pros uh, prospective players. Um, yeah. How do you, how do you shorten the list beyond that? I guess what's your what's your next step? I suppose. Okay. From from a DM standpoint, um, you need to know first off what kind of game you want to run. Sure. Um, there, there are a lot of different types of games. There's yeah. a lot of different types of players. There's a lot of different types of DMs. First thing you need to know is what type of game you want to play. And then you need to ask your prospective players 
that match your time slot, only those. Don't talk yeah. to anybody that doesn't match your time slot. Right. The players that match your time slot, you need to start asking them specific questions so that you know that they are on board and they're willing to play the type of game that you want to run. You find out what kind of game you want to run and you need to come up with some questions. I My method was a, a, a form on Google questionnaire with multiple choice answers so you don't make them think too much show them some answers and what you need to do is give them multiple choice ask them the questions let them answer look at the documents you're going to have some answers in there that you know hey if they choose this one that player's probably not for my group not, not the type of game that i want to run and that's the way that i found uh to be the most successful multiple choice questions and answers and you need red flag i say red flag not like they're bad things it's just if they answer a certain way they're probably going to be you know uh, a pretty good opposition to your style could you give an example of one of these questions uh, yes. and how you might yeah tailor it to have one of these red flag answers that you could key on i wanted five players in my game i wanted four of them to be either brand new or very inexperienced so with, with that type of game, some of my questions that I would have asked, obviously, is how much experience do you have? Right. I'm only looking for one experienced player. I wanted to bring new people into the game. So I look at experience. I pick out, I grab all the people that match the time slot, and I grab all the people that have little to no experience. And then I'll grab a few to look at from the experienced and then the next thing is uh, an example of sort of your style is the combat to role play ratio. If you're wanting to run a balanced game, then you would have a question somewhere along the lines. What should the balance of role play and combat be like in your game? A few examples, uh, you know, role playing is what I live for. And if I can avoid combat, I will all the way down the spectrum to combat is what I live for and role playing, I'd rather not do it. Yeah. <laughs> uh, and, and then mix it up along the way. Whereas if you're wanting to run a role play centric game and somebody clicks that they don't want to participate in role play, they just want combat, get rid of that player. Right. Nothing against that player, but they're not a match. Yeah. And that will be a problem in the future if you grab that player. Because because DMs are players too. They I, we don't you know they don't get talked about like that. Yeah, they they're supposed to enjoy themselves a bit as well and uh, be doing the stuff that is fun for them uh, in in the process of providing a fun and enjoyable game for everybody else too. So yeah, it's like oh well I'm the DM I'll make it work. If you want that I'll find a way to put it in there. But it's like yeah. if I don't want to put. Uh, you know, make sure that there's a combat session in every, or a combat encounter in every session, then, you know, like, I, that, yeah, if, if you want that as a player, I'm sorry, you're not going to want me as your DM. Like, that's exactly. not going to go well. <laughs> there may be DMs out there that can run every type of game really well for the players. If, I, I don't know that there are, because I'm not one of them. <laughs> right, I, I can't either, do yeah. that. I have a style. Yeah. Most people have a style. And that's okay. It's better to send a player to another DM mm -hmm. that will fit than it is trying yeah. to fit a player into your game that will not enjoy themselves yes. or that will make other people not enjoy themselves. It's okay to tell somebody yes. that you don't need to be a part of my game because of a style difference. It's okay. There's nothing wrong with that. There's nothing wrong with their style or your style. It's just that if it doesn't match, it will cause problems. It's not about if, it will cause problems. Oh, hello everybody, we are back. Uh, we have been on a 15 minute break and coming back with these guys walking into the giant chamber that had been accidentally broken under the ground. Um, you enter this enormous chamber and the first thing that you can see is 
that there is an enormous figure in the center of the room. As you enter, a strange dim light appears in all places at once, as if sourceless. Um, the room gets brighter without any source of the light. You see that the figure is about four stories tall and a humanoid. Two legs, two arms. The two arms are chained to the ceiling with chains that resemble vertebrae interlocking with themselves back and forth all the way up to shackles that are attached to the ceiling that are also vertebrae, just larger than the chain vertebrae themselves. There are shackles around his wrists that are also large vertebrae. Um, his legs, are ch or his feet, are chained to the ground with shackles around his uh, ankles and shorter chains leading to the base of this enormous domed room. On one side of the wall, there are these strange symbols written in a pretty large text that dominate one side of this room. Um, they, there are other symbols that have been smeared in some kind of red liquid on sections of these symbols. On the base of the floor in front of the chained figure that is facing you, is this strange string of symbols. As, I have several questions. As you make your way further, you see that the thing's eyes open. They are five, set, five eyes, two where normal eyes would be, and then two above slightly tilted, and then one in the center of the forehead, making almost a bouquet of eyes, so to speak. They open, and they are red, completely red, no pupils or any distinguishing features inside of them. There is an eerie light emanating from them as well. As you walk forward, this thing is looking at you. Tallow, eyes entirely wide, just nudges Drake. Drake kind of starts a, a bit and gathers himself, takes a drag off his cigarette, slightest shake to his hand, probably. <laughs> and uh, then he says, Can you understand me? There is a deep rumble in the room that sounds like an enormous bass system turning on. You feel it in your chest, and it rattles your your um, uh, ribs together slightly. Mm, yes. I, Good. I, I don't. I, I, I don't. I don't like it. <laughs> and that's. This is excellent. Wonderful. Um, can you tell me your name? My name is Drake. He just kind of gestures towards his chest. Uh, I, I, and I, this is Taylor. I, I, uh -huh. uh, and and this is Lucy. And just, Bruce, just... <laughs> you're taking this really well, Lucy. Name. What is a name? Um, it, it, something that I can call you. Uh, when referring to you in, in conversation, I'm hoping to, uh, you know, have one here. He kind of tries to, mm. like, chuckle awkwardly, probably. <laughs> Identity. Mine Not. was stolen. That's, um, that's, that's unfortunate. Um, can you tell me a bit um, uh, about that? Does that have something to do with why you're uh, in the current state you're in? gestures to the like room and you know his confinement i suppose <laughs> yes refer to my existence as not so you your name is is not yes okay good that's uh like like i said i'm i'm drake uh this is this is my 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 associate Taylor. Um, Drake. 
nods again. <laughs> um, we're here because uh, obviously there are some very, uh, you know, concerned people uh, nearby uh, that seem to have stumbled into your quarters here. Um, and uh, we are trying to figure out a way to uh, resolve this sort of um, conflict which has arisen here. Um, there are some very scared and concerned people. We're looking to learn anything and everything we can about you, uh, what they found here, and perhaps why you are, you know, confined as you are. Yeah, yeah what, he, what he said. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> you are not supposed to be here. I... I agree. <laughs> Your um, I you know that's that's fair, uh, and and you know if we have come in again, is it so? Is this your house? Uh, is this your domicile? Do you uh, do you spend time here of your own volition? Prison. He nods. Who um who imprisoned you? Why uh why are you in uh, this this prison? The maker. He writes that down. <laughs> okay. Like a like a god, like a deity? No. Maker. Then... What did they make? This. And he like motions around. He nods slowly. Your your prison? No. Or everything. Paralandia. Uh... slowly <laughs> okay so the maker um the being which is responsible for uh the entirety of paralandia he's like you know looking up from his notes <laughs> it's just okay uh imprisoned you here uh can you tell me anything about why that has occurred it was a misunderstanding. I am, you know, I believe that. Uh, that that seems right. You know, you and I were having a great conversation here. I don't know what you could have possibly done uh, to warrant this sort of treatment. But, uh, you know, I have to believe that someone who, uh, you know, could create all and everything in this, uh, you know, this world I know... Um, would not sort of arbitrarily just huck you in here for no reason. He shrugs. Um, he though, does. you know, what do I know? <laughs> he does not care about you. You know, I believe that. Uh, <laughs> he just nods. <laughs> but um, perhaps you, I mean, you must have attracted enough attention to uh to be put in this place you know he took some sort of deliberate action to uh to imprison you I... um you know whether he cares about me or not he seems to have a strong opinion about you i did not want to be here in paralandia he nods and jots that down <laughs> okay I wanted to stay in the world he made before. Uh huh. Okay. And um, is that all? You uh, you weren't happy here, so he locked you in this area. No. Or were you taking some sort of, you know, course of action to to return to wherever it is that you uh, originate from. I tried to destroy it when he first created it and and it you mean per paralandia yes he nods i um, wanted to return it back to the world it once was just nod slowly and that's where 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 you're from the, the previous, um, and he just kind of gestures vaguely around, uh, incarnation of, of all of this. Yes. He nods slowly. 
um, why did did you want to destroy it? Is that like was that going to bring us back to the state it was in previously, or? I hoped that if I reduced it back to its components, he would reassemble it in the way that it once was, once he saw what I had done. He nods slowly. So, what... Oh, boy. Um... Why? What? What was the nature of uh, your, like, I guess, relationship? I'm not sure how it works with um. I was makers and all. The first thing he made. Got it. Any shots that down? <laughs> I came right before the world before. Okay. I, I'm very confused, Drake. I'm, I'm going to go look at the thing on the wall and try to make sense out of it, but mostly ignore it's what's going right. on here because I cannot begin to understand anything you're talking about. Do you understand a single thing? Um, you know, my, I probably less than I think, but I, you know, imagine there's some of it that's sticking. He shrugs, <laughs> looks down at his notes, which are like, you know, <laughs> first thing ever, <laughs> you know, like, <laughs> maker put in there. That's just like, you got it. <laughs> uh, time before time. <laughs> while he's looking at that, I want to put one of the dynamite in his back pocket. Okay. Lit? No, God, no. no. <laughs> what is this fallout? <laughs> <laughs> Roll sleight of hand, please. Okay. He's uh, checking out where he's 16 at. again. Let's uh, see. Do it. <laughs> oh, you catch Tallow trying to put a stick of dynamite in your pocket. Just stares at him and smokes. Just, like, turns around, slaps his hand, like, kind of reflexively, and then just stops and staring at him, like, um, with a what the fuck look on his face, probably. Plan B, remember. I just kind of like shrugs <laughs> and like turns back around to like offer his back pocket, I think, as he asks um, uh, the, the guy, um, not, I suppose, he'll turn back and start asking not questions again. Um, like you know, so you have have been down here for quite some time, then I imagine. Yes. Well, like all of it, I suppose, right? No. Oh. Not all of it. He nods. Um, you know what? Uh, you know, at what point, I suppose, did you uh, get sort of directly imprisoned? You said you were trying to destroy this this incarnation of the world, right? Yes. No, it's... Um... Oh, my God. He wanted me to be something that I was not. This! And he kind of bounces on the chains. I am not this. Uh-huh. And, uh, and what, what are you? His first creation. Right. No, I've got that here. Um, I guess in in terms of not being what I see before me, I imagine. Uh, what what is it that you are that is different than this? And he just gestures toward him. I was cool, Stanley. Wait, what? Tell <laughs> turns back from the wall. Oh. <laughs> I think Drake does better at composing himself than I did. Uh, <laughs> just nods slowly and jots down cool Stanley. <laughs> um, do you mind if I call you Stanley? <laughs> mm, yes. 
Of course. Okay, I will stick with not then. That is not my name anymore. It was Understood. ripped from me. What? Uh, why? What? How did that occur? I guess when you, are you saying when you were imprisoned? No. When Paralandia was made, I changed with the world. I became this thing. Do you know why? It's kind of like scratching the back of his head. Because the Maker did not think that I would fit into Paralandia, his perfect creation. He just nods. Not as I was. And, um, and in this form, you fit. Uh, yes. Would you say that he was right? He stops for a moment and then kind of sags on the chains and said, When I was cool Stanley, I had a skateboard. I wore fingerless gloves. Uh huh. He's writing this down. <laughs> I got to watch cartoons whenever I wanted. And mom always brought home pizza. He just nods. He's writing down pizza. <laughs> That does not fit into Paralandia. What, um, sorry, just minor point of clarification. Pizza? I <laughs> don't know what it means anymore. Nods. Right, of course. And it just puts, like, in parentheses after pizza, strong magic, question mark? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, <laughs> right and um so what caused you to i guess was it when perilandia changed that you stopped being this cool stanley yes i became this thing this thing that he did not even give a name that's um that's that seems sort of unfair um it is there some grievance between the two of you other than you know it seems like the start of this happened before you tried to destroy everything then yes um you know you were changed from the uh the skateboard and fingerless glove wearing pizza guy to um to not and he gestures toward him again Correct. Hey, Drake, I'm sorry to interrupt. What comes after X? <laughs> Why? Uh, because <laughs> I'm trying to solve the puzzle. Why? <laughs> Just, I, it's clearly a plea it's, this don't, time. No, they're, <laughs> they're, they're letters, I, I, fi I figured something out here. Um, The letter which follows. <laughs> you son of a man. <laughs> the letter which follows X is Y. Oh, yes. He erases something at the beginning of his alphabet <laughs> and puts Y at the end. I, I, I got it. I'm, so, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, Thumbs Mr. Up. Stan. Uh, Mr. It's not. not, it's not. It's I'm not. sorry. Uh, what I meant to say was I, I, I can't understand why <laughs> you're not. I'm going to keep on this. So sorry. Excellent, thank you. And he nods, kind of put taps his, uh, you know, stick a charcoal on the crumpled burger wrapper he's taking notes on. Says, um, okay, right. So, god dang, this like is. Do you know? I guess like what was the nature of the transformation which occurred. Um, you know, from I'm taking your your voice more uh, from the uh, state of 
like Stanley. Do you know why you would do this now? He Afterward. thought I would be cooler in this form. Um, I mean, you know, skateboard, fingerless gloves. Pretty cool dude. What's a skateboard? He just looks over. <laughs> is, that you like know. A, is that like a wheelbarrow? Um, he kind of probably just like shrugs as subtly as possible. <laughs> I like, oh. am more powerful like this than I was before. Oh, and okay. Did I, he need that for some reason? He wanted me to be a threat. That like you were you were created as um a threat threat to uh to what or or whom I suppose to whatever he put here I was to be the supreme antagonist to be the enemy he saw me as his mind before so so yeah that eight intelligence roll there uh not great i'm rolling it for myself gotcha uh, i i have a plan all right okay, okay. <laughs> i don't like that it required an intelligence roll <laughs> to confirm that you know a low one to confirm that you had a plan now i don't that bothers me um I think uh, Drake's gonna just kind of look back, you know, scanning back over his notes here, and <laughs> just kind of like slightest shake of his head, like "What the fuck?" Um, and say, "I guess, God dang, I'm trying to just figure out what, um, you know, I guess you want. Do you you want to be free or left alone?" With what is your like you free. Know, ideal? I yeah. want to be freed. And um, assuming that that was what we did, what would you do? I would destroy Parallel. I'm gonna insight check that, but I feel like it might not be totally necessary. <laughs> Good call. Good call. <laughs> Uh, with an 11... D4 on that? Yeah, actually, go ahead. Wait, yep. One sec. Yep. I do get an extra one for my racial. That'll actually be important. With the three? Ooh, all right, 14. Um, so with the 14, you do sense a little bit of doubt in his voice, a little bit of hesitation. So you would uh, just go right back to the old grind then? I... Do not know another way to get his attention. Um, I, you know, I, I, it's a relatable situation. Getting my dad's attention when I was young was pretty hard. I am not so young anymore. But uh, parents, you know. They yeah, have but a way of making us feel very young. Right, and when you have cool as like the first part of your name, you know, it doesn't sound exactly uh you know prim and proper. Not not to say yeah, not not to say all. that you're not cool, um <laughs> Mr. Not. He'll kind of take half a step back, I think, and like, you know, sort of give him the the nod to go ahead and press if he's gonna, I suppose. Um Tallow is going to write something down on one of the burger wrappers he's stolen from you. And uh, as he walks up to where you are, he'll he'll hand it to you. He'll take it and, you know, look at it. Uh... Uh, it says, I love you, Stanley. Let's go home. Uh, you know, when I had to get my dad's attention a lot of the time, uh, I would steal things from him. You know, I would uh, I would take his his pickaxe in the morning and I'd uh, bury it out in the backyard and I'd draw a little 
shitty map to it for him so he could find it. You know, I thought it was a way of, uh, you know, bonding, but he took it as a, I'm going to be late for work. Things didn't go very well all the time. You, you know, the, the the moral I'm trying to get at here is, uh, you know, maybe it's not always about what your parents think about you that matters most. It's about what you think about yourself. <sighs> or a creator, I guess, in your situation. I don't know what I feel about myself. Do you, do you want help with that? I could try. How could you help me? Uh, I pull out my holy symbol of Skulka from around my neck, and I cast Zone of Truth around him. Okay. Uh, just talk about how you feel. I cast a spell that only allows you to tell the truth, so you might be able to pinpoint how you're feeling exactly. The magic that you wield has no effect on me. Can you pretend it does and then start talking about how you feel? Maybe that'll work. I wish to be freed. I am tired of being in this place. I feel angry for being put here after all I had done for the Maker. I wonder where he is gone now and why I have not seen him in all this time. Can I recommend something? What? Uh, maybe the best way to get back at him is protect this place I, instead of destroying it. I do not understand. Well, he's left this place a pretty big shithole, if I'm being honest. This poverty, famine, gods that try to destroy the place every day, and he's done nothing. Your creator has not come back to help us. So maybe the best way to get his attention is to do the opposite of what he left it to become. Maybe by protecting it from some of these calamities, he'll start to see that this world's changing. That'll bring him back just the same as it would if you destroyed it. I am not a protector. Says who? Your creator that left you? What's to say that you can't make your own decisions and make sure that nobody else ends up like you, chained and alone? Because there's plenty of kids out there with skate barrows and uh, pizza that, you know, they'd be gone or they'd be left without their parents if you destroyed it and they lived. You'd be doing the same thing to them as what was done to you. If I was free of my hate, I would still not wish to remain here. It is painful for me. If I were to be free of my hate, I would leave this place. Being here for so long, I know there are other places now. Do you know who wrote that on the wall? Yes. That was the last thing the Maker gave me. Drake, could you please do the honors of uh, telling him what that says? Do you know what it says before we read it for you? Yes, I do. It is the words of my unbinding. Oh, yeah. don't read that out loud. <laughs> Drink. <laughs> 
Um, oh, we don't know what it is either. That's why we asked. Um, we would never be able to to, to discern the uh, <laughs> the writings of a great and powerful piece of shit creator. I know what the words of unbinding are. Um, do and... you know why uh, the you know key to your freedom was placed so readily available to any who came across you? Because if a thinking thing came across to me, it means Perilandia has been infested. Infested with you... thinking. Things. are not supposed to be here. Now that is the not the first time that I've heard that today. I've heard, it or not. I've heard that a thousand times in my life. <laughs> Most of the time was at night. Everything the maker, is what I did. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> everything I the maker put here was not alive. This place was not meant to be populated for a long, long time. I see. And... Um... And do you think that if you were freed and you set about destroying again, um... You know what? What? Uh, what do you think the result of that actions? You know that course of action would be. Perhaps the maker is simply waiting for someone to stumble in here and speak the words of unbinding, so that I may reset his creation for him. Just nod slowly. If uh... the infestation has grown so great that they are digging into the deep places, then it is truly time for a drastic solution. Now, you know we could just leave here. Blow yes. this place sky high. But I think he is, but the fact that it is even present here in uh, a way that we can interact with it is what you're talking about i think i is am it really just that we have dug down to this point uh, geographically because you have dug down to this point and i am yeah. patient if you are to seal it up someone else will eventually discover this place he nods i mean that's probably a reasonable conclusion one could come to um... it is oh, only wow. a matter of time before someone like you walks in here and says those words nods um where is... i'm sorry drake uh... no go ahead where is that place that he wants you to go? What do you mean? Where is home for you? Home was where Paralandia came from. It is called Nebraska. <laughs> that sounds like a horrible place. <laughs> what is that like? One of the the layers of hell or something? No, <laughs> it was a large city surrounded by flat farmland in every direction. That seems fitting. And I was the mayor. Huh. Cool Stanley with the skateboard and the fingerless gloves. Yes. 
held public office. Maybe this Nebraska is not so bad. I don't know. I I don't I don't know if I'd vote for anybody who could potentially uh, do a do, do an ollie. <laughs> that was the maker's <laughs> first place. So if if you're released, you destroy Paralandia, and you go back to this Nebraska. I would hope that the maker would return and rebuild. Nebraska. Drake, I'm kind of at a loss here. What do we do about this? Uh, we have gathered uh, a fair amount of information here. Uh, he kind of taps the burger wrapper with the piece of charcoal again and uh, says, um, we were instructed uh, to come down here and determine you know, as much of the nature of this conflict as we were able. Um, I am not certain that we are the ones to be making this decision. It perhaps seems as though it is um, above our pay grade. Right. Uh... Ooh, real quick. Do you happen to know any um, wizards? Anyone at all, actually, who's interacted with you at all, aside from the miners here who, like, broke into your chamber? Yes. He nods. It Can wouldn't you... have to be a dumpy little piece of shit wizard, would it? With, like, um... Weird stars all over him, kind of looking like a weird-ass constellation. One of those. He is the voice that taught me your language after the miners broke through. After the miners broke through. Yes. He nods. Writes that down. And um, he solved your little easy puzzle over here. Yes. But he but didn't release you. He nods. No. He said that others were coming that may release me. Did he talk? He's kind of, I think... Drake's now, like, looking around nervously, like, checking the corners of the room. Did he talk at all about a plan or any sort of, you know, trap or ambush he had set for these unfortunate individuals which would be coming after him? He is the one who wrote those symbols on the Maker's cipher. Oh, so that's why it was easy, because he was smart. He did. I, I, I understand. He nods. Um, he wanted you to solve it and then speak the words. Well, we'd never do that, would we, Drake? Ever. Never do that. We, ne <laughs> we would never almost also do that, ever. He's just smoking and staring at him, too, I think. He looks back over and says, um, uh, you are not in a position where you can take any, you know, you're not able to interact directly with the world around you very effectively from what I understand here, right? Your goal is to destroy everything. You have been stopped from doing that by your current, uh, imprisonment. Yeah. Yes. No, but it's... now that the seal has been broken, the chains will decay. Just nod slowly and writes down chains decay. <laughs> uh, it, it, Circles it. <laughs> curious, uh, how long would that take? Eons. Oh, I won't be alive then. All right, you know, let's get out of here while we still can. You know, uh, you know, not. It's been it's been an absolute pleasure. You are uh, you are sure, darling. Um, we have some things to do that involve not being here and being elsewhere, literally anywhere else. Um, yes. any, fi any parting words, anyone? Um, if we were to just, like, rebuild the wall somehow. <laughs> you or... cannot do it. It was made by the maker. Shame. He just sighs and probably like flicks a cigarette. Um, I believe that uh, it is likely that we will be leaving you here, uh, at least until our superiors can be apprised of the current situation. 
and to determine, uh, I guess, a, a, a way forward. It's just kind of nodding slowly and looking over yes. at Taylor for assurance. <laughs> just nodding voicelessly. I think, um, you know, not. I will. I will pass along everything that you have told me, and uh, you know, we'll get this sorted out as quickly as possible. Thank you. Uh, as as you're doing that, Tala will go back to the wall. And I will pull out my holy symbol, kiss it, and cast Branding Smite on my sword. Okay. And I will use it to brand lines through the the cipher. Um, you obscure the symbol. The so I'm assuming you're trying to obscure the red part yes, of the symbol, yes, right? Yes, yes, yes. So you slide your sword across it, and you hear it sizzle, and it's replaced by this black streak. But within moments, you see that the the material beads back up on the surface, as if it's being repainted or sprayed onto the surface. And within moments, the symbol is there again. You hear a faint. <laughs> I fucking hate wizards. I hate, I hate wizards. Is he here? Um, Where is he? <laughs> do you think he's got? I'm gonna cast uh, detect magic here. Okay. Uh, with my racial ability, um, just to see if there's anywhere around that seems to be, you know, like an invisible magic user or something. Like uh, this, but mostly, um, you uh, you cast detect magic, and at at first you are overwhelmed by an alien magic. It is it is not part of any of the schools of magic that you are aware of. After that initial wash of strangeness, you see that the symbols that Talos is interacting with are illusion magic. That was a pre-recorded laugh. <laughs> Talos swords out in his hand looking to hit something with it. It was uh part of the illusion which uh, brings the letters back after you try to obscure them he just kind of nods slowly we are I think um, and he looks over and not in the generally safe adjacent right um, I do believe that uh, whether he is individually responsible for the miners coming across this chamber or simply uh, taking advantage of an unfortunate uh, set of circumstances for all in Perilandia does not appear that he was, um, you know, down here beforehand, at least. Shrugs. Um, we ought to probably... I guess head back and report this much. Yeah. And uh let's make sure to plan D the entrance. If you know what I mean. Just sighs and um probably start walking out of the chamber without answering, I think, and uh <laughs> kind of give a so like faux salute toward not. Um he nods his leave. giant head slowly. As you leave, was um, you know, kind of nice speaking with you. I suppose. Uh, yeah, yeah, an absolute peach. <laughs> He'll head out, and once you get out of the chamber, it's like, um, yeah, I, I cannot imagine that the response will be much less than to try and you know collapse this chamber on him. But uh, I'm not certain that I want. To us to make that decision um, well i think we should at least you know bring the the entrance down you know i don't think we need to do the whole tunnel but the entrance definitely needs to go down and i think this needs a dawning watch 24 7 you know that's again some sort of gods like a I, lot of gods at least some sort of like magical warding or a alarm system to be aware if it is disturbed or anyone enters there because i I That's wouldn't trust problem. magic to do this either. <laughs> well, A, fuck wizards, but B, uh, a certain wizard 
could probably easily just snap his fingers and be right next to him. <laughs> we need people standing inside there, staring him in the eye. I am concerned that that will not help our situation much. I think we're walking back up the tunnel yeah. before yep. the guards yep. at this point. Um, um, he says, you know, the more eyes on that, those inscriptions, the more likely it is that someone says those magic words. You get right. to the entrance and Steve turns and goes, what magic words? Hey, can I bum a cigarette, Drake? Yeah. Just another one for the road. He, you know, hands one over and he says, you know, uh, please. And things of that sort. So what's down there? Is it uh, something we got to be concerned about? As he's talking, Tallow will pull the three dynamite out from his back pocket, <laughs> light all of them with his cigarette, and throw the whole lot down the tunnel. <laughs> Steve, like, raises his eyebrows and goes, That bad, huh? <laughs> Drake, Drake's just still smoking, staring at him like Boom. nothing just happened. <laughs> <laughs> Everyone's hair kind of... It's just like a rush of hot air. And it's like, tell me, what, what's down there? What was it? Nothing... That is so far above your pay grade, you could own the entirety of Paralandia and still not have access to it. If anyone Actually, goes down there, you should probably kill them. That's about the pay grade we are talking about. <laughs> You're not wrong. Yeah, even then, kill that guy for sure. Uh, but yeah, what, what's our jurisdiction look like, uh, Drake? I think we have essentially... Uh, exhausted it, uh, other than to say that this will be uh, under the direct supervision of the Donning Watch here in the future. All right. I believe that um, there will be others heading out in this direction uh, shortly to confirm, you know, the sort of whatever, that nobody else is disturbing this scene. I, I think that's going to make a lot of the miners really happy. Nods. Yeah, no mining in here ever. That is no mining in this area ever. Mine over there, and he'll point like all the way across the fucking plain. Mine, over there. <laughs> Mine literally any other direction, and that's fine. But in this specific area, no, that's a no go. He nods um, slowly. Uh, we'll do our best. We've got quotas to meet. Good, good. Meet him. Meet him elsewhere. Perfect. Absolutely. Meet him anywhere else. Um. Drake's gonna nod and say, um, we have, uh, you know, sh as so long as no one else enters into that chamber, which was uncovered, uh, this place should remain safe for the foreseeable future. Um, so, you know, that information passed along to your, uh, your, your labor disputees may, may sort of cool that, those tensions, I suppose. He shrugs. Um, we are well, good, real good. You guys are doing good work here. Uh, Thank you. I tell you, you know, what, if you go to the Atoll <laughs> Bar, they'll get you drinks for free. All right, on our way right now, current. <laughs> Dre, Dre just nods and probably keeps walking. Um, or you know, back in general. Yep, he leads you out of the t tunnels, of course. Yeah, he doesn't let you go through there. <laughs> Wander. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I'm pretty sure the walk is pretty silent. He he keeps asking like for more details about what you guys saw, but I assume that you're just yep, keeping his. Smoking. Yep. I think <laughs> we're both two word answers. Right, we're both <laughs> smoking. Like a lot. <laughs> yeah, like a lot. Uh, you guys get to the bar, and uh, he he bids you farewell and says, "All right, well, I'm glad." Nice, nice working with you, and uh, we'll make sure everyone stays away from that entire section of mines. Perfect. What's your name Good. again? It's Steve Piate. All right. Do you know what pizza is, Steve? Uh, <laughs> he just looks at him. <laughs> nope. <laughs> I never heard of it. What it? What is it? It's like a... he shrugs and shakes his head. Never mind. <laughs> Fairly confident it's some sort of ancient magic. And uh, <laughs> you know, keeps walking. <laughs> yeah. you know, Tala will open the door and scream, All right, all drinks are on Steve tonight. <laughs> there's there's a there's a, a big woohoo coming from yeah. the bar. <laughs> Drake sighs and follows him in, I think. Um, 
my goodness. Holy crap. And uh in condo I guess I don't know what the protocol is for going back to the the home office yeah. here but or it's like do, at least contacting the, the super Do we have groups. like letters like magical letters that when we write on them it's like translated over or something like that to Ooh. Agnes? Yeah, that's actually great. Yep, you've got like a a memo, a piece of paper that says memo at the top and all you have to do is write on the paper and after a little bit the words will disappear and reappear on another memo sheet in the in the darning watch. I like that a lot. Um I mean that that yeah. makes sense as to how like we we get job after report. job without yep. going back. Yep, yep, yep. Drake will dig around in his um, many pockets for m through many crumpled papers and kind of make a small pile of them before getting to the crumpled and folded memo sheet that he needs. Uh, the bartender <laughs> gives you your first rounds of ales. Probably ignored until he gets his, uh, you know, the general job report filed. <laughs> um, Once you finish it, you look back and Tallow has like four empty fucking. Yeah. <laughs> Is joining in in some way, you know, yeah. along up at the bar. Um, God. And yeah, Andre Gold basically detail that we found the adversary and are uh, imprisoned <laughs> deep below uh, Paralandia and believe that further supervision of the situation is warranted <laughs> if there's a code system it's the highest one yes <laughs> this is urgent <laughs> uh, you, you get back understood take some time off drake will fill his pockets back up with the mountain of stuff and then heavily drink from the uh um, booze which was provided him as you're as you're taking your first sip, uh, Tala looks over to you. You uh, I think we did the right thing. I you know I I understand that he's he's a you know, world-ending nightmare creature, but he was once what I assume was human, right? He's yes. no different than we are. Sounded like a pretty cool dude. I. Wouldn't go that he far. I mean, again, if you have to have like prefix cool and then your name, if you're probably not that cool, I think you're overcompensating. But re but regardless, uh, you know, I I gotta feel bad for him. He's been down there alone, thinking that you know maybe his his creator would come back one day, and he just hasn't. And he was changed from his you know much more personable self. To right. the form that uh, was threatening the very existence of Perilandia as a whole, by the maker, as he reported anyway. He shrugs and drinks again. He says, "But I mean, you know, if the thing that made all of Perilandia uh, felt that the best course of action was to imprison him, then uh, then I think that it's hard for us to suggest that." you know anything else is is a good move um right he shrugs perhaps it's like you know i think it will be some strange information for uh you know uh spider boss to receive Ugh, he shivers <laughs> <laughs> drake just nods and then drinks heavily again from the the mugs probably like basically done with it after the two gulps uh he's, and he says um I, this, do you think the world is ending? <laughs> I, I feel like every time we see one of the, one of the Dawning Watch reports, it's always something else that could end the world. Do you, I mean, it, it comes down to, do you think this world's not meant to be here? And are we, are we a mistake? Are we just some playthings in a God's weird dollhouse? Uh, you know, it has kept spinning this long. It's hard to suggest that um, if it were meant to do otherwise, that it would not have. But uh, I don't presume to know, I suppose, either. <laughs> Shrug. I, I'm happy not knowing. I'm, I'd rather drink more and forget, but I feel like... I mean, the boss said that this is like that we were being sent out to save the world with each of these, you know, jobs that each time that we, the Donning Watch is on assignment, they are stopping some sort of, you know, potentially world ending calamity. 
well, you know, I thought I thought I'd feel like a hero when I signed up. I thought I'd be able to get my life back on track after my past. But you know, I if anything, I I feel burdened by knowledge now as opposed to heroic, which I guess is a hero in and of itself. Someone who has to shoulder the potential weight of the world every time something happens. Just shakes his head and probably, you know, waves for another round and starts rolling up another cigarette. Just, um, man, yeah, that's. And that's where we're going to end the session tonight, guys. Thank you very much for watching this episode of The Darning Watch. We're doing this every Monday at 9.30 till about 11.30 midnight around then. Um, we also have a stream every other Tuesday. It's not this Tuesday. It's next Tuesday called The Disaster Knots. That's also 9.30. Then we have a stream on Thursdays at 10.30 called Table 13. It's a question and answer advice show about tabletop gaming. And then on Fridays, we have the Misadventures, which is another long uh, form campaign that takes place in the world of Paralandia. If you like what you saw, join our Discord, continue the conversation there. Go to our website, buy some merchandise, or donate to our Patreon. Help make the show a little bit better. Thank you guys so much for watching tonight, and we will see you on Thursday for Table 13. Goodbye! Thanks, guys. See you.